Live, I'm Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. So the Arthur Ashe show at this point, do I need to mention WWE celebrating the number they put into Madison Square Garden and saying that they ran New York? The uh, Grand Slam show is currently at 18,339 tickets with 1,000 tickets remaining. So it is very, very possible, especially with the announcement of the matches for next week, that they are going to sell out this show and put nearly 20,000 fans into that stadium. I wonder if anyone on the show will talk about running New York after they do that. And then, uh, anyway. So here's the lineups for the show coming up next week, everybody. What's so funny? Nothing. I, I, I had somebody that... Uh, it was somebody in WWE text me, and uh, they were all excited because Roman Reigns had made that comment last week, and there had been another comment that the Usos were made, and they were they were so happy that they had taken the shot. And then last night on on Dynamite, Christian took a shot at WWE, and they were angry. I was like, "Bro, come on, buddy, you're you're." It goes both ways. It's just what's going to happen. Yeah, you you can't get works. can't get happy about one and angry about the other. They're both doing the exact same thing. Snide little comments. Why is it okay for one to do it, but not the other side? It's equality here. Well, when you're only a fan of one. Well. So here's the uh, lineups for everything. Friday on Rampage. No spoilers here. We've got the Lucha Brothers versus the Butcher and the Blade for the tag team titles. I won't spoil that one for you. Anna J versus the Bunny. And Miro is facing Fuego del Sol with the TNT title on the line. And also Fuego del Sol's car. Now listen, I'm not going to do any spoilers here, everybody. If I do, I will warn you in advance. But I do think it's funny that people are so adamant that they don't want to hear AEW spoilers. Even though I would bet every one of you, with maybe one exception, that as I run down the lineup for Grand Slam on Wednesday and Grand Slam on Friday... I think deep down we all know who is winning almost every single one of these matches because that's how AEW books. But I will give no spoilers. Grand Slam next week, next Wednesday, has Kenny Omega, Brian Danielson in a non-title match. Now, this one, you could you could debate who's going to win because the title's not on the line. I believe because the title is not on the line that most likely Brian Danielson is winning. I would be surprised if Kenny Omega beat him. I could see them doing a draw but I will say it's not exactly like WWE because in no universe should Brian Danielson be ranked number one, and they do like keep these rankings arguably somewhat serious. So non-title match here. Cody Rhodes versus Malachi Black. Britt Baker versus Ruby Soho for the women's title. FTR versus Sting and Darby Allin. MJF versus Brian Pillman Jr. and CM Punk will do a live interview. We have also got Rampage next Friday, which will be a two-hour show. We have three matches announced, so they're going to do a bunch of angles on the first night to set up Friday. But we've got Adam Cole and the Young Bucks versus Christian and Jurassic Express, CM Punk versus Powerhouse Hobbs, and Jericho and Jake Hager versus the Men of the Year. So a packed, a packed two nights of action. And where is uh, Moxley and Eddie versus Suzuki? How come that's not on my lineup right here? Well, that's taking place as well. Lance Archer and Suzuki versus uh, versus Moxley and Eddie Kingston at some point on one of those shows. Anybody know? Nobody? All right. Not announced yet, apparently. Pretty sure that one's going to be announced. I could be wrong. So what did you think of the uh, Dynamite show last night? I thought the show was great. You I that was, uh, me? Wow. Okay, I thought that was a rhetorical question you were throwing up in the air at the fans, and then we're all going you do to is run. yell at me for not letting you talk, and then I do a long, <laughs> pregnant pause, and then I ask you a question, and you still don't talk. What did you think, Mike Sempervivi, co-host of Wrestling Observer Live, of this Dynamite show on Wednesday?
It was a fine, fine show. It was, That's wasn't what I it? Think. I thought it was. I really did. You know, uh, look, look at what they announced for that. That's pay per view level quality when it comes to that show next week. And obviously, you're in New York in a, in a venue nobody's ever run in before. That's incredibly unique. So obviously, they want to make a big deal out of it, and it's going to be fun, I'm sure, for them. Even though they. I'm sure there'll be some digs, but they probably won't outright do it as a company like WWE would try to shove it in your face that they now have a, a claim for New York as well, too. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just thought it was a really good show. I, I The Dan Lambert stuff with I was surprised they went in the direction of Jericho, although then I thought about it. It makes sense to include Jake Hager in that, I guess. So I, I enjoyed that. Again, match-wise, I don't know how you want to go over everything here, but overall, what they again, what they needed to push going forward, which was the New York show, which was Adam Cole being here. And by the way, as as wrestlers go on the underrated wrist on the Hall of Awesome that you have there, at some point, Frankie Kazarian may need to be considered for that because I don't know if there's a more consistently underrated yet great wrestler than Frankie Kazarian and what a great match he had with Cole to, to lead that show off. So, you know, from pillar to post, you know, from the opening to the close, everything they needed to push going forward it worked. The Rosario Dawson thing, you know, it's a, it's a fun crossover, I, I guess. That, that was kind of random. But then him and Malachi Black and Cody go brawling through the crowd. I thought it was kind of superfluous, but then I'm thinking it, it was fun. And that's the bottom line on that one is it, it was fun for the crowd. It was fun, I'm sure, for the viewer. It kind of went on for a little bit too long, but... No, it was just fun. Did you think it was just... Hey, but but it was yeah, actually... Well. It, was, it was legitimately fun on a show where... There was a lot of, again, a lot of good stuff. I just, there's an edge to the Malachi Cody thing. I'm not sure, I'm not saying it goes missing with that kind of brawl, but it's like this whole thing has been about this man wanting to kill Cody and his family members in the most violent, brutal way possible and send them to Hades. You know, when you do something Dude, like this, that, Mal this Malachi's went, taking beer and throwing it. But <laughs> Yeah, they went crazy. The crowd was going nuts for this. They were brawling all over the building. But that's the whole thing is the crowd's going to go nuts because they're brawling through the crowd. And it's, it, again, well, it was You want to hit him with an axe? So. Well, we've seen guys you wanna, with axes You want to kill recently. NXT's gimmick? If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.